Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be here with this group uh, because I, I remember when this group started so many years ago and uh, there were just a few of us uh, and now we have a, a fairly full room and I think our uh, greatest days are ahead. Uh, not only for this group but for Paulding County. Uh, I love Paulding County. I've lived here 23 years and uh, we have just great potential in this county for growth. Uh, for doing good things. There's a lot of good things going on in counties around us that we can capitalize on and I want to be the one that leads us there. Uh, first of all though, I want to address some things that have um, been going on in the county. And uh, first of all, we've got a real lack of civility uh, in our government uh, of treating people decently when we disagree. Uh, because, you know, whenever you are in government and when you're making decisions that affect 150,000 people or more, that's just the people that live in the county. You've also got to think about the people who do business in the county. <clears throat> but when you're going to make those kind of decisions, you are going to have disagreement from time to time. That is okay. Uh, I have uh, worked down at the Capitol for 10 years in public policy, and I know how to disagree without being disagreeable. So uh, that is something that we have to do. I've learned over the years that, that one day you may, may be opposed uh, very much to the position that, that someone takes. And then literally the very next day you are working side by side with that person to get something <laughs> done that you both want done. So uh, that, that's an area that we could really uh, use some help in in our uh, county government. Also responsiveness. We need to be, remember always in county government, that our citizens are our customers. And they should be treated just like a company treats their very best customers. When they call, they should be called back. When they ask for something, if it's within your power and ability to do it, you should do it. And, and that's, that's what county government should be to its citizens. Uh, we also need to govern our whole county. I'm going to talk about this dumb airport issue one more time. <laughs> I, I'm kind of, uh, and, and I don't mean it's dumb and that it's not important, it is important, but we've just talked about it so much. Uh, and you know, I'm going door to door, I've got a good team of people, and I, I don't even know how many doors we've hit because I hadn't stopped to count, but I know <coughs> it's well over 1,500. And uh, still at doors, and it doesn't matter whether you're down here or if you're up in Bentwater, uh, wherever you are in the county, there are people who say, first thing, just tell me this, where are you on the airport? And they want to know. So this is where I am on the airport, for the record. I oppose commercialization because I was there when the promises were made that this would never have commercial passenger service. So I think that we should stand with what was told back then to all the citizens of this county. I was chairman of the Republican Party during that time uh, for six years from 2000 to 2006. We were going through explosive growth. There was conflict back then. It was handled very, very reasonably, but also there was information. People came out, the, gov the people from the county came out and met with different groups and told them what was going on. Total opposite of how this newest passenger service thing came down with the airport, uh, where everything was done in the dark, nobody knew about it, and all of a sudden it was sprung on the citizens of Paulding County. So um, anyway, I oppose that, but I will say this, our airport is here. I had one guy, he came like barreling out of his door and said, where are you on the airport? And I said, well, I oppose the commercial <coughs> service. And he said, he said, well, I just hate the whole airport. And I said, well, do you mean you want me to bulldoze it down? Is, is that what you're saying? He said, yeah, that'd be fine. I said, well, you probably don't want to vote for me then. Uh, because we're going to make that the most successful general aviation airport that it can be, just like PDK, just like McCollum, like Cartersville, like all the other small airports around us. It can be done and it will build up uh, our business community. It will bring in jobs <coughs> that are good jobs, not low-level jobs. And uh, I, I'm just excited about the possibilities for our airport. But outside of the airport, we have the rest of the county, guys. We have been fighting and fighting and fighting about an airport. And, and, uh, and then this is another thing that I've heard as I've gone door to door. People are, are really tired of their needs in their community being neglected <coughs> because we're busy fighting about an airport. And so on the north end, of course, we have Lake Point. 
And I have uh, met with Earl Earhart, who is the uh, CEO of Lake Point, and he has endorsed me, and he is helping me because he said, you are one of the very few people in Paulding County, you were the first person in Paulding County to come to me and say, what are we going to do to cooperate with this huge development that you've got going on? Lake Point, for those of you who don't know, is a sports uh, complex. It's going to be bigger than Disney World. They will have two million visitors next week. Now, are they in Paulding County? No, but they're about three minutes from our border. So how many of you think that a development of that size might have some effect in Paulding County? Yes. I mean, it will. There's no doubt about it. So we'll either get uh, very healthy, intelligent growth up on that northern corridor so that we have attractions for people to do and good things for them to do, <coughs> or else we will uh, get the low end. And we don't want the low end. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we do good things for our county. On the south end of the county, we have a south end too, uh, and there's going to be a six-lane highway coming in uh, from Douglasville and I-20. Well, I was on a, a tour, uh, the Unholy tour, and about, uh, goodness, during uh, the legislative session, and that's a tour about human trafficking. And it really concerned me uh, as I rode around, we get on a bus and you drive around and you literally see uh, people being trafficked on the streets. Uh, and they show you, they go, so look, that person, they'll walk up here where the trucks are parked and that kind of thing. They really explain the whole thing. It was, it was um, probably <coughs> one of the most heartbreaking uh, things I've ever seen. But on that bus with, with us were two people from uh, prosecuting uh, attorneys from Douglas County. And they said, yeah, we're starting to have a problem with this in Douglas. So on the south end of the county, we're either going to do healthy development and get good things out of that. And, and look at the potential here. We've got great potential. Because if you think about that, if we can get to I-20, then we can get to the arteries that get to the Port of Savannah. So what a great opportunity for some light industrial, for some small manufacturing, for that kind of thing. We're not going to get a car plant uh, in this county because our topography does not, is not suitable uh, for big development. But we can get uh, something uh, smallish down there that's right on an artery. I'm not talking about in your neighborhood uh, in South Paulding, but, but on a main road uh, that can uh, really generate some income and, again, some jobs for this community. Why do I keep talking about jobs for the community? Because 84% of Paulding County workers commute outside of this county to go to work each day. And then we go, why do we have a traffic problem? <laughs> well, uh, everybody's getting out from like Marietta and Atlanta, and then they're coming back in from Marietta and Atlanta. It's okay, this is my daughter. <laughs> Claire, come here, baby. <laughs> I'll embarrass her to death. Uh, this is my youngest daughter, Claire, and, and she has uh, come today uh, from Emory. She's getting her PhD there, and she'll have it Wonderful. soon, right? <laughs> no pressure, just in front of everybody. <laughs> But anyway, she's a few months away from that, but uh, she's uh, taking time out to go door to door with me today. Uh, but anyway, so back, back to that big highway. So we either get something positive down there, something good, uh, or we get the, the dregs of I-20 in Douglasville uh, coming into that area. We don't want that. We need a leader who can look ahead, who can look around outside of the county. Now some people say, you, you've got a lot of contacts outside of the county and, and your donors come from outside of the county. Yes, they do. I've worked outside of this county for a long time. And for the last 10 years as I've worked in public policy, I've traveled all over the state of Georgia. I've worked down at the Capitol. I've built some very strong relationships. And I think it's an honor that the people that I have worked with from around the state said, you're running for office? Oh my gosh. And, and sent me a check. I mean, I appreciate it. And, uh, and that money uh, spends to buy signs and to buy things to go door to door. But more importantly, as I've gone around the state, I have learned about the way that they do things in other places. And I can bring that knowledge back to Paulding County. Just recently, I was in uh, a meeting, and I, I have so many meetings, honestly, I don't remember which one it was, but I was in a meeting with some <coughs> leaders, and one of them said, in our county, we now have a person who is dedicated to help small businesses get started. And I said, that's a great idea. 
Why aren't we doing that in Paulding County? So I started talking to business leaders in Paulding County that have small businesses, and I said, well, what was it like uh, getting uh, your license in Paulding County? And they went, oh, <laughs> they were, it was painful, you know. And they, then they started telling me not only their horror stories, but the horror stories of others. As I went to a door the other day, I said this. I, I do like a quick elevator speech uh, at every door uh, if somebody uh, answers. And so, uh, I said something about uh, streamlining the process for businesses, and this guy like almost jumped out the door, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, if you will fix that, I'll vote for you forever." <laughs> I was like, "Yes, I like you already." <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's just kind of one of the ideas that you can get from someplace else that we can bring here that is very low cost. That is, you know, I mean, we could use it with with people that we've already got. Uh, in employment with the county and and make that work just somebody that helps that person get through the process that 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 you know helps them overcome any hurdle they run across because it shouldn't be a mystery how to open a business and it shouldn't be full of rude surprises like a thirty thousand dollar sewer tap on fee and that kind of thing that we've actually people have experienced water and sewer tap on fees so uh, anyway it's um, that, that's some of the experience that, that I can bring. Uh, I want to leave a minute or two for questions. You guys, a lot of you know me, uh, but some of you may not have thought about me in the context of being a commission chairman. So I would like to open the floor, if I may, Sharon, for a couple of questions. Do I have time for that? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody? We know you so well. <laughs> Because you've been working outside the county so much mm -hmm. at the state level, can we be assured that your focus will be here on Paulding County and in Paulding County if you become chairman? Absolutely. Uh, my, my loyalty is to my county. Whenever I am out and I'm hearing and meeting with other people, no matter where I am, this is my home. And so I'm always thinking, because I've worked not only around the state of Georgia, but North Carolina, Florida, uh, different states, I'm always thinking, <coughs> we use this idea in Paulding County. So that's where my heart is, is with this county. And I can't wait to make this my full-time job. Uh, because, yes, I'll talk to people outside of the county after I'm chairman. We have to do that, guys. We are not an island unto our, ourselves. Uh, the things that they do in Bartow County affect us. The things that they do in Douglas County, Cobb County, Harrelson and Polk Counties, all those things affect us. So we've got to have those good relationships. And so we'll keep those relationships up. But absolutely, uh, I will be uh, uh, the biggest fan uh, and, and the hardest worker for Paulding County that you've ever seen. Thank you. Anyone else? Have you ever run for office before? Actually, I have not. Nope. I, the, the biggest thing I ran for was uh, when I ran for party chairman <laughs> in, in Paulding County. And I think the first time I was not opposed, the second time the person dropped out, and then I think they wanted to make me the queen. Because <laughs> I had to beg somebody to take my place <laughs> when I was ready to go into the workforce. Uh, so uh, anyway, but we grew the party. It was so much fun. I loved that. The party was uh, very small. Um, of course, when I moved here, it was the county was 100% uh, Democrat controlled. All the elected officials were Democrat. Uh, we, As we started getting involved, it started changing, and, and we got a couple of Republicans elected here and there, school board in different uh, spots. And then uh, as we grew, uh, it, was, it was really fun to watch because we grew, we'd, had about, we'd have about 100, 150 members at every single meeting. And, uh, and then Democrats wouldn't even run. I mean, it wasn't that they would win or, or lose, they wouldn't even run. And I was like, yes, my work here is done. Uh, and so then I went to work uh, with, uh, for, with the, uh, my career as I had just finished uh, homeschooling all my children. So uh, anyway, Claire, Claire was the, the last. And uh, so her senior year, I actually started working a little bit then. Uh, but uh, anyway, she was a good student, uh, probably better with me gone. <laughs> and so uh, that's why she's getting her PhD in neuropsychology. So uh, anyway, all right, anything else? Yes, ma'am. Um, we've spoken, we spoke last night together at the same forum, but I, I liked something you said about relationships with the 
the current sitting commissioners and kind of the relationships that are already there, you might might elaborate just a little bit on the idea that you would be be able to well work with the commissioners that are already in place. Oh, absolutely. I am thrilled uh, to work with that team. Uh, I think we've got great commissioners. And, but I'll say this. No matter who the people elect two years from now, if it's the same ones or if it's different ones, we'll work with whoever is there. It is so important to have collegial relationships with the people that you work with because it is not about my ego or my ideas or me, me, me. It's about this county. What can we do together for this county? So again, I'm going to bring that back. And I've got this on my website about this civility and this responsiveness and that kind of thing and the relationships. It all matters, and we've got to uh, hold people, we have to treat people re with respect. I mean, that's so basic, uh, but it, it hasn't been done uh, a whole lot. And uh, so I think there, there's, there's three different groups that I, that I feel like that have lacked uh, being shown the proper respect. Uh, one are the elected officials. I have been appalled at billboards that I have seen uh, and efforts that I've seen and even things that have been said in meetings. Uh, we should hold our elected officials uh, in high regard whether we agree with them on everything or not. Uh, the second group is our county employees. They should be treated with respect as well. And the last group, and again the most important group, I've mentioned this before but I'm going to say it again, our citizens of our county are our customers of county government. And they are the ones that we work for. So every day we should be thinking, and, and this is what I did when I, when I was chairman of the Republican Party, literally I said, there's something wrong with me because I wake up every day saying, what do I need to do for the Republican Party today? So I can't wait to wake up and say, what do I need to do for Paulding County today? So, all right, well I'm going to go, unless there are any more questions, I'd love to answer them. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, knock on some more doors. <coughs> That's what I love doing. Uh, and, uh, besides speaking to you, of course. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Sherry. Thank you. Good day. Okay. Two hours. Yeah. That work. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, um, listening to me for 10 or 12 minutes. Um, I believe, no, no, I, th I think that within two to three years, we're going to have an economic crash. I believe that uh, if our government continues to be in deadlock and not solve our country's problems, we're going to have a disaster coming up in uh, 2018 to 2019. Last time I was here, by the way, in case you didn't hear, I'm running for Congress. My name's Alan Levine, originally from England, a citizen for 40 years. I love this country. It's fabulous. It's, it's like people, when I lived, I used to live in San Diego, California, which is a great town, and a friend of mine said that uh, I was a born-again American, because when I became naturalized, I, I loved everything about America, I still do, and she said to me, you are a born-again American. I think, I still believe it, and I think that Disneyland is for kids, and the rest of the country, it's Disneyland for adults. I still think this place is, to me, it's Disneyland. I drive around, and I think, this is America. It's amazing. I love this place. Anyway, last time I was here, um, I spoke about um, a key reason why we won the Second World War. It was because of manufacturing. The, the Japanese were at 100% when they attacked Pearl Harbor. We were at about 70%. We ramped up production, and uh, the sheer quantity of war material that we produced uh, helped us win, or made us win, in both the uh, Pacific theaters and in Europe. Now, how many people here watched 60 Minutes? Okay, it's, I've watched it for, for ever. They had a story about Rosie the Riveter a couple of weeks ago. Did, did anybody see this? They were honoring the, uh, the young women in the 1940s who took the jobs which men typically did, which was manufacturing, and they manufactured airplanes for the war effort. And at the end of this story, you can go to CBS.com and you can watch this, it's well worth watching, but on CBS.com, 
uh, on this Rosie the Riveter story, they said that these women produced one bomber an hour for the war effort. Wow. And I said to my wife, who was sitting there watching this, I said, this is, this is TV, it just isn't true. So I did my research, I went to Wikipedia, which you're welcome to do, and it turned out that they produced two bombers an hour. It's, a, it's just unbelievable. So the question is, how many, without loss of manufacturing to China, how many bombers do you think we can produce today if we go into a major war? One a month, maybe? So, um, as I said before, in 1945, with the GDP this big, we produced about one half of the uh, world's GDP, and China produced this much, 4%. Now, with the GDP, much bigger, but still this big, we produce about 20% of the global GDP. China, which has come down by half, China's gone up from 4% to 20%. It's a disaster for us, and it's a disaster in the making because our government is not doing anything to solve the problem. So we're losing manufacturing jobs. Yes, there's plenty of jobs available, but the jobs are at minimum wage, as you know. So people who are making minimum wage barely make it. Um, and they eat foods, typically, which are high in fat and sugar because they need the calories. I went to, as an aside, I went up to Somerville in my travels around 14, uh, 12 counties of, 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 the, um, of the 14th district, and I stopped to visit with the publisher of the local newspaper and he gave me a copy of the newspaper. There is a, an article, this is rural Georgia, way up, uh, way up to the northwest corner of the 14th district by Tennessee. There's now a regular article called Diabetes Corner. What does that tell you about our system where they have regular stories about how to deal with a disease? And it's a column. So I was quite shocked about that. Anyway. So the way to solve our problems is fairly simple. We bring back manufacturing to the United States. This is the bedrock of our, of our GDP and our, the, the good fortunes of the country. In 1970, the uh, gross domestic product of this country was uh, in, based on domestic spending as well as manufacturing of one type or another. 60% uh, was, was in domestic spending. Now it's 72%. Almost three quarters of what our GDP is made up is of people spending money. Everywhere you go, there are ads, spend money, borrow money, use your credit cards, live now, pay later. The problem is, eventually you have to pay the bills back. In two years, we're going to have a crash because foreign governments will no longer believe we'll ever pay our debts back. Our government has a permanent credit card, or so it thinks, that it can keep spending and spending and spending far beyond what it takes them, which is typically about 18%. And eventually, the foreign governments, notably China and Saudi Arabia, and I'll talk about that in a second, what they're, what they're going to do is say, no more. We want to start selling our bonds to get out from under it, because we do not trust the dollar as a reserve currency, which is my next topic. If you read the news, Saudi Arabia is threatening our government and had a frosty relation, a frosty meeting with uh, President Obama threatening to cash in or to sell government bonds. They have almost a trillion dollars of, of, of U.S. government bonds and if they sell those bonds, will trash the market. So the crash may come in fact earlier. They may trigger it. In January, we had a stock market crash. And if you have stocks or 401ks or whatever, you probably became a little nervous that the stock market plummeted. It used to be when I was living in England that there was a saying. The saying was, uh, when the United States sneezes, the rest of the world catches cold. That has now changed because the stock market crash, the, the mini crash we've had, that's going to be one of a number before the big crash coming up in two to three years, was caused by China. If you look, if you go to the newspapers and you research this, you will find that the Chinese stock market crashed and ours followed. It used to be ours would crash and theirs would fall. Everybody else would follow. So China is actually taking over. Australia uh, is a country that supplies huge amounts of raw materials to China. They're now a supplicant.
country. Their market is, their dollar value, Australian dollar value has crashed because the Chinese aren't buying as many of their products. Um, and I'll give you an example of why we have, a, we, have, we have to deal with China in a second before I run out of my 12 minutes. I have lots of topics, Sharon, so I can go for an hour if you want. <laughs> but the, uh, um, um, I'm in the computer business, and um, I deal with file servers and data centers and server virtualization and BDI and a whole bunch of technical stuff, but that doesn't matter. What matters to you is um, two things. There's a company called Huawei, which most of you have never heard of, but they're a Chinese company that produces technical products, routers and switches and technical stuff. Uh, I was on a conference call about a year ago, and um, they're only 30 years old. They now have 170,000 employees, which is China, so they have lots of, there's always lots of employees in China. But what, this what caught my attention is that uh, of the 170,000 employees, they have 76,000 engineers. And I was shocked by that. That means they're a very, very serious player in the uh, world's market. So, on 60 Minutes, if you watched that, there was a story about the movie business and how the, the Chinese movie uh, business or the Chinese movie production business is going to completely take over from Hollywood. Um, and um, something that caught my attention, I need to, this is, I'm just giving you an outline of just these problems we have in China, which you don't read about. China, um, back about 15 years ago, or back in, in 10 years ago, it had 4,500 movie screens in the entire country. We have 40,000 in the United States. In 2015, uh, China has 30,000. They've gone up from 4,000 in 05 in 10 years to 30, well, actually 32,000. They are opening 22 screens a day, uh, which is uh, 8,000 a year, so they now have exactly the same number we have. We're opening none. It tells me we're in the decline, and they are in the ascendant, unless we do something about it. So before I run out of my 12 minutes or 12 hours, whichever comes first, here's how we fix this. This is why I'm running for Congress. I want to uh, dedicate the rest of my life to fixing our economic problems, because I'm all about money. I used to be in the bond business in, in San Diego, bond and financial planning, and I did so well at it, I made so much money. At 25, I had retired, and I spent two years surfing. I was never very good at it, but I had a good time and playing around <laughs> in Southern California. And I got out of it, went into the computer business, because I thought, is this it? Is this life? I'm just retired, and I can do what I want, so I wanted a challenge in business. We need to bring, bring back manufacturing to this country, and here's how to do it. And please visit my website, which is levinecongress.com. We do it very simply. We change the tax code. Having been in business for 30 years for myself, and understanding how business operates globally, um, businesses are always looking at the, profit, at the bottom line, the net profits of their company, and anything they can do to increase their profits, they do. My wife is a CPA. She spends her life working with very complex tax returns, and she sees all of the tax dodges and the loopholes through the, the tax code that we have. So what I want to do, and this will be the number one first bill that I will propose, is that we eliminate corporate taxes on manufacturers in this country who source, who not only manufacture in the United States, ladies and gentlemen, but source their products in the United States. When you buy a Chevy, for example, it's not manufactured here. They're often manufactured in Mexico or in Canada, or at least partially assembled and they buy pieces from Mexico, Canada, China, Taiwan, wherever the, whoever supplies the cheapest products to spec. But if we change the tax code, so that companies will make more money by manufacturing in the United States and employing Americans in the United States, they will, believe it or not, start manufacturing here. And that will create a sense of confidence. It will create millions of new jobs. <coughs> and um, 
we'll have factories, a lot more factories. We'll see areas that, which are basically dead because the factories have gone away and people are scratching. And they're now eating rich foods, which are terrible for them and creating columns on diet, how to control your diabetes. And we will create millions of jobs and the public will have confidence in the world. Once again, we'll have confidence the United States will remain the leader and will beat China at its own game. And that's why primarily I want to run for Congress. So in my last, I can go on about other topics, but I think Sharon, Sharon's given me the evil eye. <laughs> it's time to yeah. If you have any questions, I can entertain a couple right now. You can visit the website. I have two, I've written, here's a, one thing I have to say. When you go to campaign websites on a local level or a congressional level, whatever, you'll find there's two things common. There's a picture of the candidate smiling, showing their teeth, and there is a box saying PayPal, donate now. It's all about money. I can fix the, I can fix the, uh, the um, election system, which is corrupt, and I have to fix this for that, but that's beyond this particular speech. However, my side is different, because I believe in telling the truth, as I see it. You may not like it, but I'll tell it to you anyway. I have written 250 articles on a whole variety of topics. Lots of I me mean, think of a topic I've written on them. I do it for two reasons. One is I like to write, so I have writing diarrhea. I just keep writing. Two is that I have to research the topic before I write it, because people will jump down my throat if I make a mistake. So I've become, by definition, pretty good on a whole series of topics. I even wrote to 60 Minutes recently. They had a story about the El Faro, which is a ship going from Jacksonville to San Juan. If you remember, if you remember it, it sank in a storm a couple of months ago. I wrote to, to uh, 60 Minutes, and I told them why it sank. Nobody's ever said why it happened. And it related to an incident in Hawaii, of all things. But, so if you're interested in why the El Faro sank, go to my website, type in the words El Faro, and you'll see, a, you'll see an article that I wrote, and you'll say, I didn't know that. <coughs> anyway, so I did that. But anyway, let me entertain a couple of questions, and then I'll leave it up to Sharon to have uh, additional people speak to you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. I guess not. Anyway, ladies have, here. Have you ever run for office before? Yes. I ran in two places simultaneously. I ran in uh, Hawaii, the first district, and I ran in the 11th district. We currently live in Kennesaw. Our house is on the multiple listing service up for sale. We're moving north of, uh, of Rome. That's our plan to do that. Um, I found, I did research, I have to read the Constitution, and I found out something interesting. What I found out is that the primary system is a private enterprise. It isn't mandated in the, in the uh, Constitution. You have to be a resident in the state uh, at the, in the general election in November. However, because of our system the way it is, as is in the 14th District, I don't know whether you know this, but there aren't any Democrats running. And because there aren't any Democrats running, anybody who, whoever wins, there's three of us as you know, the primary next month will by definition win the general election. So I discovered a loophole. And essentially I ran in Hawaii and uh, the 11th district. Hawaii, could not at the same time, but sequentially, which is a big difference. I thought, we're going to have a crash. And I could fix this. I really can. I wanted at that point to eliminate all corporate taxes because it was a waste of time and attract these trillions of dollars as are sitting overseas. And I wanted to bring that money back. Apple has, I don't know, half it, well, three, four hundred million dollars sitting in Ireland. They will not bring it back to the US because of taxes. I wanted to deal with taxes so they would bring the money here and they would invest it in the United States and provide jobs. I've refined that story from eliminating all corporate taxes to a, a more refined approach, which is specific to manufacturing. So, nobody's done that before. I got written up all over the place. I was on national public radio a couple of times. I got interviewed all over the country. I had solutions to international problems and didn't win because it's a money business. It's a, it's a money business and it's being known 
most of the, um, unfortunately, when the public, the voters go to the voting booth, my belief is that 90% of them have no idea who they're voting for. Very few people are as diligent as this group in this room. They're willing to take the time to look at the issues, to look at the candidates, to listen to the candidates, <coughs> and make an informed decision. And because of that, being known is the most important thing, unfortunately. But nevertheless, which is why you'll see all these campaign signs out there. It's not that anybody pays much attention to them, but when the person goes into that voting booth and they look down that list of names, they will tend to vote for the name which says, unfortunately, incumbent against it, which I'd like to get rid of, or they will vote for the second one on the list because people, when people are given a buying decision, good, bad, or best, they will pick human nature, the one in the middle. Fortunately, I'm the one in the middle, which is good at this point. Um, and that's how they make the decision, the vast majority. There is a solution to that, and the solution is very simple. One is you scramble the names, so that on every ballot, it's just the names are in different orders. Two, you remove the word incumbent. Three, you have three for federal campaigns in particular. You have, uh, you have two separate mailings at the post office, which delivers to everybody's house, houses six times a week, and every, every door direct mail piece sponsored by our government. And what that does is every person of federal race can, can deliver, in this instance, in this district, 200,000 pieces of paper with what they want to do. They deliver before the, the um, general election, about a week, so they can read about the, uh, about the candidates if they're interested, and also before the, uh, the early voting. So they have two options to read about the candidates. And every candidate will have a website, and it will be, they'll be encouraged to visit that particular person's website if they're interested. You can't do anything more than that. But I do have solutions. I don't deal in fantasies. I'm a, I'm a common sense candidate, and I want to solve problems. That's the reason I want to go to Washington. It isn't become rich, because, <coughs> as you know, Prince died a couple of days ago, and it's a wake-up call because I'm 10 years older than he is. And he just died probably of heart failure uh, or a heart attack because he died apparently in his elevator in his house. So he didn't, he just collapsed and now he was gone. Um, and I'm 10 years older than him and we don't have, my wife and I, we don't have any children. Uh oh, message says 30 seconds. So anyway, so when we're gone, we're gone. There's no nepotism <coughs> here and there's no family dynasty as you commonly see in politics. So anyway, please visit LevineCongress.com and uh, I'll be happy to entertain questions. You can call me and I'll talk to you on the phone. But anyway, thank you so much for letting me talk for a little few more than 10 minutes. Yes, sir, you did. Okay. Thank you very much. Sarah, thanks a lot. Thank you, Ms. Sharon. It's an honor to be here today and I'm sorry I've got to leave and run out to work, but. The first thing I wanted to address, everybody wants to know, why are you running for public office? Well, I've got three reasons. One is six years old, the other one is eight years old, and the third one's I've lost my mind. <laughs> but, but what I wanted to do, I, I want to lay out just a couple of reasons why. We, we've, got, we've got some transparency issues in the county, and it ranges from the commission to the school board and maybe even our state representatives. No one's here. Uh, there, there's one school board member out of seven that regularly attends these meetings. Um, you've got two incumbents right now that aren't even willing to campaign. They're not willing to put an investment in to spend money on a campaign. That's what Mr. Levine was talking about. When you see someone running for office and they're not running for office, how are they going to do when they're, how hard are they going to work for us when they're elected? That's a concern. So what I want to encourage you to do today is research your candidates. Research who you're voting for. Know what they stand for. If they're not showing up to these meetings and they're not showing up to debates, that indicates they're hiding something. It also indicates they, they may not even know why they're running. It might be for a social status. It might be for uh, something to put on a resume. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not why I'm running. I've met with several teachers at my kids' school. I want them to understand that my elementary school that my kids go to is probably one of the best in the county. So I'm not one of these, these parents that's mad about a certain issue or concerned about one thing that I've seen. Um, 
but I will tell you that the education on the north end of the county is a different education than the kids get down here on the south end of the county, and I don't think that's right. And I am the first to tell you that I'm guilty. I school choice my kids to burn hickory, and I live right here at White Oak Park. But I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't have to send them to the north to, to, to get better technology and better quality of teachers. We have to fix that problem. We have to fix our special needs program. Ragsdale Elementary School has got a serious, serious problem. They've got 24 special needs students with one teacher. They range from 4 years old to 12. That's got to be fixed. And when you think special needs, it's not, it's not mental health issues. I mean, it can range from feeding tubes to special needs to, to all, uh, all sorts of things. And they can't get substitutes because the substitutes can't handle the workload. We've got to fix that. We also have to, we have to bring the janitors back to the county. They, they voted to outsource that. Who do you want opening your kids' yogurt at lunch? Do you want Mr. Tom, who's worked at the school for 27 years, to open your kids' yogurt, or do you want somebody that, 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 is, that, that reports to somewhere in Pennsylvania only to save $600,000? Where's the $600,000? Our taxes aren't going down. Teachers' pay's not going up. We have to fix it. I don't want to outsource bus drivers. I don't want to outsource uh, cafeteria workers. And that's the next thing that's coming if we're not careful. The last thing I'll leave you with, I heard from a school board member the other day, not, not Kim, not the one in the room, but he's been a big advocate to record the school board meetings. He wants to record it and put it on the Baldwin County channel like we do the commission meetings. He's received resistance from almost every school board member to do that, and one in particular had the audacity to say, well, if they record us, we're going to have to be careful of what we say. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We have to fix that. And that's why I'm running, and I hope, I hope I can earn your support. Get out and work for these candidates. And you may not realize there's 10 candidates running for school board countywide, and maybe only three or four are actually showing up to things. That is sad. Everyone's filled out a form. They're not going to spend more than $2,500. Well, that, that's great. But my kids are in the school system. I want to make an investment. I want to change it. And it may be issues that we can't change today, but we have to elect people who are going to lay the groundwork for generation after generation after generation. I appreciate your vote. I hope I haven't gone over my four minutes. No, you're fine. And y'all have a great fine. Saturday. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My name is Ashley McDonald. I'm also running for member at large for the school board. Um, I agree with everything Mr. Fuller said. I'm right there with you. Um, in addition to that, though, I would like to see some positive change and some positive growth within our schools. I went back and I researched all this past year of what field trips um, the school board assigned to students. And I was quite surprised. No field trip was set up at a local farm. Um, Mr. Levine talked about, you know, diabetes within our country. We have a huge health crisis. And it starts teaching children at a young age where their food comes from, how it's cultivated. Um, just the basic difference between fruits and vegetables, a lot of children don't know. A lot of children think their food comes from the grocery store, from Kroger. That's not where it's grown. Um, I'm a big advocate for what's called farm to school. It's where school districts partner with their local farms. Um, we send children to these farms to see how things are grown. They can get their hands dirty and learn about it. More hands-on teaching is what we need. In addition to that, some school districts are even partnering with local farms to bring in fresh organic fruits. And I think that's something we can try to accomplish here. Yes, it might take a little bit of money, um, but I am for if we can be financially responsible, we can make sure that programs such as these get incorporated. Um, last time I did talk about transparency within the school district. Um, I'm right there with Mr. Fuller. We do need to have these things televised. If the commission's meetings are televised, we should be able to um, get onto our local public broadcasting and see it posted right there. Um, for members of our community who can't make these meetings, that's the way that they can get involved and they can see it fresh up. Um, and that's where I stand. If you, you guys have any questions for me. What position are you running for? Member at large. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I am not running for school board, but my husband is. My name is McBride Dutton. Uh, my husband is Steve Dutton. He is running for District 1. Uh, unfortunately, he could not be here this morning, so I get to come in here and talk to you about a little bit of a different approach. Um, I'm not going to talk to you about his campaign, 
but I do want to fill you all in on a little bit of who Steve is as a person. I, I think that's very important to know who your candidates are behind what they're running on, the platform that they're running on. Steve and I met about eight years ago. We actually both graduated from the same high school. Uh, he graduated a year before I got there, so we didn't even know each other when we were there. We were introduced by a mutual friend. Uh, we got married about two years ago, so we're technically still newlyweds. Um, and we have blended our families together, uh, which is, you know, that's, that can be a little bit challenging sometimes. Um, we have, between us, two 19-year-olds. We got a double dose of the 18. That was fun. Uh, we have a 14-year-old, and then we have a 2-year-old granddaughter who is just absolutely precious. Um, a little bit about Steve. He has coached and refereed Little League, sport, uh, Little League sports and adult sports um, between baseball, softball, and basketball. He was a basketball player in high school, uh, so basketball is definitely his love. He has volunteer time at our church uh, with our Kids Quest, Kids Quest Ministries. Um, leading small groups. He has also been a small group lead with Surge Camp for basketball. <clears throat> and then after they saw how well he was with basketball, they asked him to be the director for Surge Camp for a couple of years. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's also recently been involved with FCA at our local high school, uh, which is East Pauling, where our 14 year old is a freshman, although you wouldn't know when he's about this big. He's huge. <laughs> Um, Steve believes that we need to promote positive behavior within our students by providing positive role models. There's a lot of our students that are out there that don't have those positive role models. Whether it's because their families are working really hard to just try to support the family and can't be there for all the different functions, we need to have people that are able to show up and, and show them that they matter and show them what good looks like and be able to let them know that they can be that too. They can have, be their best and they, didn't, they need to have people that they can look up to to see that behavior. In business, Steve is very, very well respected by both his peers and his clients. Uh, he manages about $60 million annually in business, so he knows how to negotiate contracts and look in and, and find out what's best for everyone. Um, one of the things that we had talked about recently after he came home from the school board meeting was they had looked at spending $250,000 on an art project at, I believe it was Paulding County High School. We have some really bright and talented students. They, they were looking at doing this mural in the cafeteria um, to promote school, um, school spirit. Why are we outsourcing that when we have these students who can come up with what the mural is and actually go in there and paint the mural themselves? I can only imagine that to provide the materials and everything, it might have been $2,500. And what better way to show school pride than to have the actual students do the work? Um, one of the things that Steve has talked about, I will talk a little bit about his campaign, is looking at where we're currently spending the money. I'm sure there's some ways. We've got to trim the fat somewhere. We can use what we currently have to funnel it out into different areas that are going to make a much bigger difference for our students overall. The other thing I wanted to address is that Steve's company is very well aware of his bid for school board. He, before he qualified, he went to his coach, because they're not called bosses or managers at his company. They're called coaches. They help develop the individual all the way around from business to personal life. They're very, very in tune with that. His coach gave him the endorsement, and his coach's coach gave him the endorsement to run for school board. In fact, one of his peers is currently on county council, which I equate to county commissioner. So they are very excited to have their employees involved in community service. In closing, I just want to say that we ask for your support. We'd love to have your money because campaigning is kind of expensive. But most of all, what we need is support. Do your research on him. We do have a website. I have some push cards that I can hand out today. Look at who your candidates are. If you truly believe in who your candidate is and what they stand behind, then vote for them. But if you don't know what they're about when you go to the polls, we need to change that. So please share the news about who your candidate is. If you truly believe in them, then you believe in them. And that is not an issue at all. But we ask for your support. We ask that you share the word about Steve. Um, do your research about him. He's usually here at these meetings, and he does apologize for not being here today. Um, but the last thing I do want to say is, like Virginia said, let's keep it respectful. 
you know, at the end of the day, we are all living in this community together. And I would just like to ask that for those of you who are running for office, encourage your support to remain positive as well. Nobody ever looked good by making somebody else look bad. So that's all I would like to say. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ellen. Um, I'm Ramona Talley. I've been a resident of Paulding County now for 37 years. We moved here when my husband graduated law school and have been here ever since. We've, we've uh, started out in, on the south side and we remain on the south side of the county. Uh, of those 37 years, I uh, have 32 years in education field, 29 of them being here in Paulding County. I started out, as I've said in one of my resumes that I posted, I started out as a school bus driver, and I think, Kim, you did too. Uh, yeah, yeah, school bus drivers. You did a lot more than you ever think. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. But I did finish up with a doctorate in education, so I've really been through the rim. I was a teacher to begin with here in Paulding County, and then I advanced to the Youth Apprenticeship Program, which is still thriving today, uh, vocational coordinator, and then assistant principal, and then principal, and I retired four years ago as the director of CTAE, which is Career Technical Agricultural Education, better known as Vocational Education. <laughs> Um, I applaud all the speakers that have spoken thus far as far as the school system. I agree with many items that they uh, pointed out to you. And one thing that I did want to say, my top three issues, and uh, someone said they are vague, and yes they are, but it, it covers, it's a, it's a huge realm that covers a lot. Communication, the citizens' concerns, and safety. Um, I really liked what Ms. Dutton had talked about the school environment and if you've read uh, the Georgia Department of Education has a new program out now, a new initiative, it's called PBIS, PILA, colon, safe and healthy environment. They have proven that uh, children have increased the academic, they, their scores are increasing when they've got a good environment and a good environment starts with a good board of education. It starts with good administrators and absolutely ends with good teachers and all the support staff. Talking about the custodians in school, you know, students get to know these custodians. They have a big impact on our students' lives as well as the teachers. Teachers spend a lot of days with students on many hours, sometimes more than what the parents actually spend. So we need good, positive teachers that love what they are doing. We have some teachers, and not just Baldwin County, but all around the state, all around the U.S., we have teachers that's there for convenience, not there for pay because, you know, the pay scale. A lot of people think teachers get overpaid. Well, when you think about it, teachers only work 290 days a year, and that's what they're paid for. So uh, they don't get paid for summer. Their salary is divided into 12 monthly installments so they can have money during the summer so they won't be absolutely broke. But they're paid for what they do, and as far as I'm concerned, teachers are way underpaid for what they do at the school system. We want teachers that are active with the students, that get out and do things with them, that, that even show up uh, for, I know I've got three children, all three graduate within the Pawnee County school system. I was very happy with them. Uh, I have four grandchildren, grand boys, and three of them are in the Pawnee County school system, so I still have a vested interest in, in the success of our system here in Pawnee County. Uh, and I want my children, my grandchildren, to all remain in Pawnee County. So as far as jobs and economic development, we need that in this county because in, uh, in the year, what is it, 20... 40, 25 years from now, it'd be about 2040, we're expecting a, a population of 240,000 is what's predicted. So that means a huge school growth. So we have a lot of things to look at in the future for our school systems. We need to now and lay a more uh, basic or, or more solid foundation for our students so they will graduate not wanting to leave Paulding County but to stay here because there's going to be opportunity here and that goes from the top all the way down to the bottom with all citizens not just the elected officials. But I do have an understanding 
being through the positions that I have with the Pawtucket County School System, I understand budget, I understand transportation, I understand the curriculum, where it's coming from, I understand the special needs students and programs, and I understand above all the safety of our children. That is one thing that we're very concerned about is the safety of our children in the school system. But anyway, I would appreciate your vote. May 24th, again, I'm running District 4, which I would represent part of the south side of the county, but that does not mean I would only represent them, I would represent the entire county. So if, if I do, if I am elected and you have a concern, my telephone line, my ear is going to always be open for you. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. Um, I really appreciate it. And it is hard work. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Kim Cobb. I'm uh, running for re-election, uh, District 3, which handles most of East, and then it just goes to Central Pauling. But remember, you vote for every post, so we should all be representing you. So it doesn't matter where you live. It only matters where we live. Um, I want to start with something that um, they had given us a coffee cup a few years ago. And sometimes doing this, if you really put your heart and soul into it, you don't see the big picture changing. And I keep going back to this every time I don't see the big picture changing and I want to throw in the towel. Um, it was, it's a saying that's one morning a man walked along a beach covered with thousands of starfish that had washed up during a storm. Now they lay dying in the sun. He saw a young girl picking up the starfish one by one and tossing them back into the sea. As he approached her, he couldn't help but ask, why bother? There are too many of them and you won't make much of a difference. She picked up another starfish and tossed it into the water. Then she turned to the man and said, I made a difference to that one. And that's what keeps me going, is you can make a difference little by little. We may not see the big picture changing. We may can't completely overhaul the curriculum at one time. But we can try to keep the children safe. We can listen to what the people need. And when someone calls me about their child, I'm not going to do something that only benefits their child. Now, if we can, and that's, you know, we, we'll do that, that's fine. But normally what benefits one child also benefits all the children. And I do, uh, I have had two children, one's about to graduate from the system, one already graduated. But that's not what got me into this. What got me into this was that school bus, like, like uh, Ms. Talley mentioned. And going into different schools, seeing different children who had different needs. And also the heartbreaking thing that this community we have all these children out here, and unfortunately, they don't all have involved parents. But they are probably going to remain in our county. Therefore, we have a vested interest. Do we want children who have been educated and know people around them, working with them, care? Or do we just want kids that we're shoving through the system, we don't care if they learn anything, we graduate them and then stick them out here with no jobs? So we definitely need to make sure they're getting an education, make sure that somebody knows that they care. Because you can look at a lot of children, you can say by third grade, who's going to be successful and who's not. But we can change that. And it may take us changing it one by one, but I believe we can change that. And we all need to take a vested interest in our school district, whether we have children in it or not. So thank you, and I appreciate your vote um, by May 24th. My name is Francisco Hartley, and I am running for State Representative District 66. I live in Douglasville. I've lived there for the past uh, 12 years with my lovely bride of 27 years. We have three adult uh, daughters, seven grandchildren, three dogs, and a cat. Uh, I currently serve as the pastor at New Hope United Methodist Church out in Chattahoochee Hills. I am retired military. I served for 25 years. I'm a veteran of Operation uh, Iraqi Freedom and Operation uh, Desert Storm. Um, my educational background, I have a BS from uh, Regents College, a Master's in Public Administration from Troy State. I have a Master's of Divinity from Emory University. I'm a doctoral candidate at North Central University. Uh, I am a big into volunteering. I like to give my time to my community and my church and to others. I love to serve. Um, I love to run. I've completed 34 marathons, uh, one ultra marathon, and three um, Ironmans. So the reason I tell you all this is I bring a lot of energy. <laughs> when I come, I, I bring a lot of energy. Um, but what I also plan on bringing is integrity, fiscal accountability, and servant leadership. I, and I also transparency. We have to know what is going on with our elected officials. There shouldn't be anything hiding. 
We shouldn't be hiding anything from, from the voters. I'm an open book kind of person. If you want to know something, you can, you can come and talk to me. You can call me and talk to me for an hour and I will listen to you uh, as I did yesterday. <laughs> I listened to some, that all about the airport. I'll tell you right now, I don't know anything about the airport, but I do know a lot about it now. And I haven't made a stance yet, but the biggest thing is transparency. If they're putting, uh, if they're trying to uh, commercialize that airport, then you should all know about it. There shouldn't be anything hiding from you. It's the same thing when I ran for state senate in District 35 against Donzella James. All the officials there, none of them wanted to bring up the uh, vote for South Fulton, whether or not South Fulton would be a city. And I can't. That, those were things. Like, why? You're the voters. You guys should be saying what we should be doing. And I kept, I kept trying to get them to bring that up and say, hey, bring it up for a vote. They wouldn't do it. So I am here to serve you. I, I'm very familiar with Douglas County. I'm very familiar with Fulton County. And I'm starting to learn a lot about uh, Paulding County. So anything you guys want to can give me any advice, you can tell me about this area, I, I, I would love to hear about it. What I am asking from you, though, is I'm asking for you to check me out. If you go to franciscoartley.com, I have my cards back there. You can check me out. You can ask people about me. I'm involved with the Republican Party in Douglas County. I currently serve on their executive committee. When I lost the Senate, state Senate race two years ago, I didn't pack up my bags and go home. I actually got more involved. And then I decided I'm going to run again. So you can talk to people within uh, Douglas County and Paul <coughs> County. You can talk to Ron. Ron and I have just met each other, we're starting to know each other, Micah Gravely, uh, talk to him, talk to, and, and uh, you find out a lot about me, but also once you find out about me and you, and you get to know me, tell your friends. I need your support. I do have a primary uh, to deal with, and then once I get past that, I'm going after Kimberly Alexander. And I would love to have <laughs> The thing, though, this is the thing, and this is, and this is, as Republicans, we are so bad at this. We tell people, yes, I will vote for you. Okay, that's great. Now I need about, what, 25, 30,000 more votes? Yeah. <laughs> You've got to tell your friends. The Democrats are great at getting everybody out to vote. We go and say, I will vote for you, and that's it. You tell your friends about me. Let them know who I am. If not, then you got Kimberly Alexander for two more years. So my name, once again, is Francisco Artley. Uh, I'm glad to be here, and you can check out my web website. You can email me. You can call me. I will listen to you because that is the kind of person I am. I served, I served my country for 25 years. Now I serve God and the people of uh, New Hope United Methodist Church, and I'm asking to serve you for District uh, 66 here in Paulton and Douglas County. Thank you. All right. Well, my name is Lindsay Everhart. Um, I probably know 99.9% .9 of you in the room, but in case I don't, you know who I am. I'm the one with all these crazy signs out here because that's the first thing everybody says to me is I see your signs everywhere, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm running for coroner of Paulding County, um, and people have asked me, why in the world do you want that job? Um, and it's, it's a big job. But it's a very important job, and I was thinking about, you know, kind of on my way over here, I, like I said last time, I've learned that if you get together with a bunch of politicians, they want you to say something. So I was thinking about what I was going to say to you guys today. And I was reminded of when I was in mortuary school, um, we had this quote that we would walk under all the time, and they, would kept, they kept hammering it into us. And it was uh, by this guy named William Gladstone. And I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's this dead guy out in England somewhere. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and he said, show me the manner in which a nation or community cares for its dead, and I will measure exactly the sympathies of its people, their respect for the laws of the land, and their loyalty to high ideals. So, and that applies in Paulding County. How we treat people and how we treat people that have passed away says a lot about who we are. And it says a lot about what we care about and the respect that we have for our community and each other. And for somewhere along the line, people want to forget that we're going to have people pass away, and we are. And they don't want to talk about that, um, but it's going to happen. And we need to have people that are handling that, that are trustworthy and are respectful, and <coughs> take to heart the fact that each and every person that they come across has a family, 
and has friends and has contacts that love them and care about them. And this is not just something I have to do. This is not just a, a paycheck. This is not just a, <coughs> something that we do. It's, it's actually somebody to somebody. So um, I think I have a pretty good understanding of that from my background and growing up here in the community and my parents being who they were. Um, they, they taught us from a very young age uh, that you know you care for people regardless of whether they're breathing or not. So uh, that's what I intend to do when I'm elected coroner. Um, and there's a couple things that you know uh, we need to fix and there's some things that we need to address and I think everybody's got that and regardless of what you're running for. Um, and I haven't really spoke a lot about that but I'm going to kind of give you the play by play real quickly here before I have to leave. But um, Fairness and ethics, you know, you have, you have to have a fine line between, between this, you know. Uh, people say to me and have been asked this question, uh, how do you expect to remain fair and ethical when you are managing a funeral home? <coughs> and um, my response to that is it can be done, but it has to be done in the right way. I think we need to give families uh, a list of every funeral home in alphabetical order in this county, and we need to say to them, when you make your selection, you let me know. And that's all you need to say. You don't need to say, I, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, let me take them back here. We're not taking bodies back to funeral homes without families expressly authorizing that that is where they want to go. Um, we're not pressuring families. We're not going to do that. Um, we do have a problem in the county right now. We do not have a place uh, for multiple body storage. We need to develop that, and that is something that if you get elected commissioner, me and you going to talk because we've got to have that. Um, as far as the hospital goes, they don't have that facility. Uh, I've already spoken to the director of nurses there. It, it is not an option. They are sending people to Kennestone Hospital right now because they don't have a morgue that will suffice. And, you know, we, we, can't, we can't afford that. We're growing by leaps and bounds, and we've got to have somewhere that we can store people and keep the chain of custody intact and make sure that, you know, these bodies are being treated fairly and that we're not going outside of the lines and, and you know, that's where errors come into play. We don't need errors in that situation at all. <coughs> so that's something that we need to develop. Uh, we need accountability, you know. We need to make sure that we're transparent. Like that <laughs> word just keeps coming up all across the board and it's because it's a big deal. There's been a lot of things that weren't transparent in, in every area. You've got to be transparent. Now with the coroner's office, you've got to be confidential and you've got to use discretion. And you can't just go out there telling everybody everything you've seen and what's going on. I get that. But you also need to make sure you tell people what you're doing with your resources, how you're using your budget. As a funeral director and managing a business, I'm used to budgets. I do them every year. They're a pain in the neck. But you know what? They keep us on track, and they keep us knowing where our resources are being used, and they help us plan for things like that facility that we need. And we have to project out and see where the county is growing right now and see what the numbers are going to be in the next 10 years and we need to be ready for it. We can't wait till then to get ready for it because next thing you know you're going to have something happen and you're not going to have anywhere to go and the GBI is back up guys. I mean it's days on end before they can even take anybody down there for autopsy. So we have got to have something here in the <coughs> county for that. And you know um, paperwork as well, you know organization. If you want to mess up somewhere you got to have, <laughs> if you don't have organization and you don't have communication you're going to mess up, and whatever you're doing, it's going to fail. Because you've got to have organization, you've got to have communication. And so we need some sort of paperwork trail in this county. Right now, I'm not bashing anybody, I'm just telling you the truth. I get a post-it note that says, time of death, call me if you need anything else. That ain't good enough for me. <laughs> That's just not good enough. You need to make sure you document what these people are wearing, what's in their pockets, Everything about this situation, we need to have a backup plan because, you know what, that, somebody can come back later and say they had on the diamond ring <coughs> and we don't have it. <laughs> and so the, the county's then looking at each other going, what are we going to do? You know, make sure you document, make sure you communicate, make sure you're organized, make sure you're ethical, and make sure you plan for what's coming up down the road. And that's what I want to do. And uh, I think we just need that in this county. So I appreciate your vote, your support on May the 24th. I think we got a debate coming up Monday night. I'm ready. I hope everybody else is. And um, I appreciate y'all very much letting me come and speak to you this morning and just be a part of this. It's been a lot of fun to get to know you guys. And, uh, just, I think we have some fantastic people running for things in Baldwin County. So thank y'all. Okay. I'm going to be very quick. Um, my name is Kirsten Liberty, and I am running for District 17 State House of Representatives. And um, I want to start off just real quick, and I will be quick, I promise, because I really do need to get out there and meet some citizens. 
uh, as someone else, several people mentioned, <coughs> we're transparent. Let me read to you something very quickly. Transparent, allowing light to pass through so that the objects behind can be directly seen. Also, easy to perceive or detect. And having thoughts, feelings, or motives that are easily perceived. <coughs> That's me. I want to be able to represent the people of Paulding County in an open, honest, ethical, and transparent way. There's no secrets here. There's nothing behind me that is evil. There's nothing behind me that is dark. There's nothing behind me that would be considered or perceived as unethical. I am who I am, and I'm not afraid to stand in front of anyone and tell you who I am. I'm not afraid of who's backing me, and I'm definitely, definitely not afraid to represent the citizens of Paulding County in any situation that may arise. I have greatly enjoyed meeting um, well over 1,600. I've knocked on well over uh, 1,600 doors at this point, and I met people from Cartersville all the way down to Billerica addresses in Paulding County, and I love it. I love every bit of it. The people have been absolutely phenomenal. And only a few of you have chased me off with guns, so that is awesome. <laughs> I consider that a win right there. Um, no, seriously, I, I love getting out there and meeting the voters. Um, I have lots of opportunity to, to speak here um, in Paulding County, and some of you were here last month when I, when I really spoke, but I am willing to speak to any of you about any of the issues that are coming up in Paulding County. I refuse to talk about the big A word today, the airport, because I just don't have enough time to get into that. And I, I won't do it, Miss Sharon, because I don't want you to wave that orange card at me. That's kind of mean. So <laughs> I won't talk about it or, or any of the other, the other big issues today. But I, I have spoken in the past and will speak in the future again. I really do have to run. We've got an opportunity today to, to meet up with lots of the voters, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. But I do want a chance to represent you, and I really do need you to talk to your friends. This is a huge election. Primary election on May 24th. People don't even know it's out there. I can tell you from going door to door, we have not done our job as Republicans at getting the word out. We need you all to call your friends, all of your friends, and your friends' family, and strangers. I don't care who you talk to in the store. Please get them to come vote on May 24th. Vote. I'm asking for you to vote for me on May 24th. You can vote as early as May 2nd, and I do recommend you early vote because school is in session on May 24th. It's the last week of school. It's going to be insane. Get your people to get out there and vote because I want to make sure the Republican Party is still in control of Pauline County when we end this election. If you have any questions, contact me. I did bring in a couple of signs. I have a lot more. I've also, I think someone passed out uh, information about me. It should be on your table. You can contact me anytime. It's my actual cell phone number. Get out there and vote. Get your friends and family to vote. Go get a bus and pick up everybody on your street to vote, whatever it takes. But let's make sure Pauline County stays red. Thanks. Have a great day. Well, I'm Leanne DeFore, and I'm the campaign chairman for David Lyles for Superior Court. And David couldn't be here this morning. He's actually down the road next door at the courthouse at the t Touch a Truck event. So he wanted me to do a mad minute on his behalf. Most of y'all have heard David speak before. Um, he's been a prosecutor for 18 years. He spent 10 of those years here in Paulding County as the senior assistant district attorney. He prosecutes all kinds of felony cases, but primarily crimes against children, uh, making sure that there's justice for victims of child molestation and child abuse. So a very noble cause. He's extremely active in our community. He serves on the board of the Boys and Girls Club. He serves as on the board of Fellowship of Christian Athletes and on the Public Safety Board. Um, he's been awarded several times for his work in the community. He's a good Christian man. He and his wife and, and son are members at McEachern Memorial United Methodist Church, um, where he's very active there. His wife is on the board there, and he would really appreciate your vote. Um, David, we have three good guys running for Superior Court judge, but only one of them really rises above the others, head and shoulders above in terms of qualifications, and that's David Lyles. Uh, David has the evidence code memorized. He knows criminal procedure. He knows civil procedure. He is an adjunct faculty member at Emory University School of Law. He teaches trial techniques there. He's a mentor for young attorneys. Uh, he will continue to mentor young attorneys in uh, his position as Superior Court Judge. Uh, just a phenomenal candidate. Knows the law, knows process, is fair, has integrity, good character, and will treat everyone uh, fair from the litigants that appear in his courtroom uh, in front of him 
to the members of the bar that are practicing in his court day in and day out. So on May 24th, I hope that you guys will vote for David Lyles for Superior Court Judge. I am Roger Leggett. I'm running for the chairman position for the Board of um, Commissioners. Folks, we, we are in a big crossroads in not only our county, our country. You listen to the news and you hear all this stuff going on with people using the same bathroom, you know, knocking North Carolina because that they don't want that to happen. The media in our country is so liberal that we're in trouble, folks. And what's going to happen? Everybody says, well, it's not a big thing for people to use the same bathroom. Wait till it gets down to the school system. And you got little boys and little girls going in the same bathroom because you can't separate them because of the law. What's going to be said then? It could be a big issue for our country. And we need to do things and put people in place that are going to make the right changes, not the wrong changes. Locally, we've got some great people running for positions. David, uh, Lindsay, I've worked with coroners in this county for many years. I've seen people die every way and die just about. And I've been involved in that in that process that she talks about as far as documenting, document, documenting everything you see and you do. Take pictures. And it hadn't always happened in this county before. And we've been real lucky. If we have another mass casualty situation in this county, we have no place for these people to to be put. Done. When the plane crash happened in New Hope, we had the Simmons Industry plant that's just right across the bridge there before you get to the Kroger on 61. We were lucky that that place was available. We don't have a place like that now available. Our system is broken in many, many ways. We send anybody that dies in this, in this county now has to go to the state crime lab. It may take up to a week to get the body back sometimes. It depends on what's happening in, in the other areas of the state because they have to do theirs too. When I was commissioner, we had Dr. Joe Burton from Cobb County that did our autopsies. That's not available to us now. So there are so many things. Being a commissioner is not just roads and bridges and things like that. There are many other things that, go, that are involved with it. Vernon can tell you that already. He's, he's been in office long enough to, to find out sometimes how things change and you have to deal with them. But I am uh, very fortunate. I've been from the west side to the east side, back to the west side, you know, and there's a lot of folks, like Kirsten said, that have no idea that we're having an election May 24th. And that's sad, folks. It really is. But uh, it's good to see you, Ramona. I hadn't seen Ramona in a long time. I uh, had to go to her house one time because of uh, her son had a fish hook in the back of his head. So. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> but anyway, I am Roger Leggett. I'm running for commission chairman, and I appreciate you both. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank y'all for being here today and allowing me to speak to you. Uh, my name is Robbie Dobson. I'm running for Commission Chairman for Paulding County. I'm a local business owner. I've been in business here for over 35 years. And if there's one thing I have learned being in business for myself is if you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your customers. I mean, I believe that with all my heart because they're, the county employees and stuff we have here, if we take care of them, they're going to shine for us out there in public because they meet the public a lot more than we probably will. They, the public sees them. I believe there's a great need that for us to start retaining some of the county employees that we have here. I mean, we're losing them right and left to different counties and to different places over a few things that we could fix. And I, I believe in taking care of our local people here. I believe in taking care of our citizens here and treating them with you know, respect and responsibility because they're the ones that putting us in office. So bottom line is, you know, we're here to represent the people of the county. You know, the airport deal is not been handled right. 
Uh, the commercialization of it, I'm definitely against. I'll tell you that right now. We're, we're going to have to deal with the airport being a general aviation airport. And we need to try to study ways to bring some things into the airport to make it where it don't cost the taxpayer so much money. And I don't think this is going to happen overnight. I think it's going to take a little while for us. And we need to be picky about who we try to bring into this county to do business here. I don't think we just need to take the anybody that comes along. I mean, we need to spend some time and research people, you know, before we, we invite them in. And there's a lot of, we've got five or six business parks in this county that we could put stuff in. You know, I mean, we could attract businesses to come here and be here, and I think that's what we need to be trying to do. And, and I'm going to shock everybody, because I've talked to a lot of people in this county. Not everybody wants every inch of this county developed. There's people that still want this to be a bedroom community, and I'm just, I mean, that may not be popular, and I'm not, trust me, I'm not against business. I've been in business for over 35 years myself. I'm definitely not wanting no business, but we have to be choosy, because a lot of people moved here because they didn't want to live, you probably didn't want to live in Fulton County when you moved here. Exactly, and I don't want this to become Fulton County. I don't want us to have... You know, I mean, a lot of people, and you say, okay, people drive out of this county to work, and a lot of people choose to do that because they do not want all the stuff that comes with all the bad stuff. And so we got to be real careful when we, we talk about growth. The growth needs to be managed. It needs to be looked after. And I think my experience of being in business brings that to us. I'm able to make decisions. I've had to do budgets. Like Lindsay said, when you're in business, you have to do budgets for yourself. My job hadn't been just spending money. I don't have people just dumping money in my lap to spend. I have to manage money. I have to do things to make sure that you can get through the next year or so. So, I mean, Pauling County is a great place to live, and I want to keep it this way. You know, I want, to, I want us to all become unified. And, I mean, and everybody keeps talking about, well, the airport, the airport. The airport is a big deal because we're draining way too much money into this airport thing that we could have been spending somewhere else. I mean, it's divided the county, and it's just, and there's no need in it. I mean, the way it was handled was wrong from the start. The people of this county should have had a better voice in this, and I promise you that I will serve the people of this county. Not me, I mean, it's, I, my vote is just one vote in this whole thing. We need to be representing the people of the county and be open, and I know everybody keeps saying it, open and transparent. But listen, if you don't tell people what you're doing, they think you're doing nothing. You know, or they think the worst. We have got to let people know what we're doing. We've got to be open with them. And just, you know, I would appreciate your vote. Uh, you know, my name is Robbie Dobson again, and I'll be glad and it'd be an honor to serve y'all if I could get elected. Thank you. My name is Ron Davis. I'm your Post 1 Commissioner. I was elected in March in a special election, um, and I've had the opportunity to serve the county for about a month and a half now, and it's, uh, it's been an absolute joy. Uh, the election in March was to finish 2016, the current term, and uh, so I'm on the ballot again in May for the, uh, for the next four-year term, and, and I'd appreciate your support. You know, we've seen a lot of good candidates come up here today, and um, the, the word transparency comes up a lot, and the reason it's coming up a lot is because because the people who have been in the county uh, watching what's going on, people like me, uh, as an activist, seeing what's going on and saying, we have a problem with transparency. There's a reason. There's a reason that we've got school board members that are that are saying they're going to have quarterly town hall meetings now, that they're going to post all their votes online. That's something that <laughs> I took the lead in. That. Steve Steve got the idea from me, didn't he? <laughs> I steal that one. No. Every, every, vote I every vote I cast as commissioner is posted online. I've got a website, rondavispost1.com. It's not a campaign site, it's a constituent uh, accessibility site. Every vote I cast gets posted there, the reason why and what's going on. I think that's the kind of thing we need, and I'm excited to see all these candidates and school board and, and, um, and coroner and chairman and all of our county offices, people embracing this, this issue of, of transparency, because we have a, a real need for real transparency and an honest ethical government. And so I'm, I'm excited to be able to serve for the rest of this year. I'm going to ask for your support May 24th. Uh, early voting starts May the 2nd. I'd, I'd encourage you to vote early. 
And, um, and if you have any questions, you can see me after. My uh, website's electrondavis.com. I also have some information up here on the table. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Craig McDowell, and I'm the Paulding County Republican Party chair. And, you know, I want to say, as I've been thinking about this, we do have a lot of people, and, like, this is the first time I've had a chance to see Robbie, and I think it's important to say, um, uh, and Miss Ramona, it's the first time I've had a chance to see I apologize for that $100 comment earlier this morning. Um, but uh, the comment I want to make, and it was mentioned, you know, we talk about civility and everything. We have a lot of people. There's a, we say 200,000 people. There's 140, 150,000 people in Paulding County. We're the largest county in the 14th district, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in terms of our convention and the pride that we should have as a county from that process, not just in hosting, but the way our delegates and our alternates showed up. It was a, a good day. But, you know, we're, we're in the push for May 24th right now, um, and there's the fishhook story is fantastic, Roger. I love that. Um, but the point being is we know each other. We know each other, and we're out there, and we're pushing against each other to win something that we're all very passionate about. And so, you know, civility is a big deal for me. And we're going to have our debates on Monday night and Wednesday night. We're going to do um, uh, the information was in the Dallas New Era, but our commission chair race is going to be debated on Monday night. We have um, Larry Reynolds from Polk County is going to be our moderator. You know, it's important because we're so close-knit that we have uh, a more neutral moderator that comes in so that when the questions are being asked, we're, we're providing those questions. We put a call out to the community. I've actually received some emails from some questions within the community, which is fantastic. And what's interesting, I haven't received one question about the airport. So I think what's exciting about that is the airport isn't the only thing on everybody's mind, and I think that's important. So just know that Monday night's not going to be about the airport. I mean, there may be a question or two because there's things that need to be discussed, but the focus is going to be on the growth or the lack thereof or the planning of it and those types of things because we all care about that, and um, so I think that's important. Wednesday night we have uh, Chuck Payne, who's from uh, Whitfield County, I believe, and he served as a field representative for the Ben Carson campaign. Is a wonder. He's a great, uh, great person. But he also comes to our county and gives us a, 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 a neutral moderator for Wednesday night. So we're excited about that, and it's going to be at the Chattahoochee Tech Paulding County Hiram campus. So I think that's important um, uh, to talk about our debate or our convention. Uh, Last, was it last week? Yeah. Because I just got home at midnight last night. I don't even know. Um, I've already forgotten. I'm on to the next thing. Um, North Paulding High School represented us very well last week for the county. The volunteers, not just from this county, in making sure that we worked with our district leadership and with our school uh, system um, to make sure that we had uh, the agreement signed and what we had for, in terms of the facility and everything. You know, I couldn't have asked for a better thing. I won't tell you that it was the, the Ritz-Carlton or something like that, but in terms of the facility and the, the ability to host and have everybody, I thought it was really good. The other part that's exciting about it is, and we, I talked in other meetings, is that it was really important for us to have the people from our precinct mass meetings that were our county delegates to lift and elevate to our district delegates and now we're on to state in the first weekend in June was that we needed to show up because we we want to make sure that the people that were interested in being delegates to serve at the national convention <coughs> in Cleveland had the full support you know and, it, and I have different feelings about different things but I'm really proud of how it ended up. And it ended up that of the three delegates and the three alternates, um, it's not just Paulding County. We, our, our representation, which is 50% of that slate, had to have support from the district. And the people <coughs> that are elected and will be serving not just this county, but this district and representing us in Cleveland as part of the delegation from Georgia, you know, they 
we, I think we're represented really well, and I think you should be really proud of that. So we're excited about that. Is that good? Yes, that's wonderful. The only other thing I will say is that because we have our, di or our state convention in June, we, we will have a May monthly meeting at Mount Tabor <coughs> Park in the community center, and at that, it'll be very much like today. It will be a candidate, because it's the 21st, I believe the third Saturday in May is the 21st. Election day is Tuesday. I know there's early voting, and everybody in this room is already going to be done voting. But you can get the word out, because the undecideds, you know, it'll be one more opportunity for our candidates to present themselves. Am Mount I going okay? Tabor? Yes, sir. What's that, ma'am? You, you said Mount Tabor, right? Yeah, Mount Tabor. Is where, and we're good, and that's where every, every monthly meeting will be this year. And then the last thing I want to say is... What's nine, that? Nine. 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 We do nine. Yeah, the, we like to get up early. The ladies. Oh, people and there's food that we eat, too. We eat food. There'll be food. Yeah. There's food here, too. Um, and the other thing is, is I just want to, I, I want to thank everybody that's running for office. I just think, I, you know, I don't have that courage. And I think it takes great courage. I say this all the time. I think it takes great courage for everybody to put, you're not just putting yourself in front of the community, you're putting your family in front of the community. And I, I, I want to commend you all, regardless of what the turnout is on May 24th or into the future. But I have a ton of respect for you. That's not, I, I've looked at that a lot of different ways to Sunday for my own personal uh, thing, and that's not something that I have an interest in. And I would never put my family through what you guys are willing to do. So I want to give you my respect, and I want to commend you, and I want to applaud you. So thank you.